in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed and um it's only fair that we don't keep ourselves here unnecessarily long, but um, I know that we came with our hearts opened. And while I came, in fact, it started from the office and then we came here and Apostle Mike was teaching. And for me, I just thought to myself, I was hoping that we were really listening because you see, when the Spirit of God is communicating, the goal is like he was speaking to be able to bring understanding and transformation hallelujah and so um i really desire that we pray this for me is a conference but this is the middle of the week so even if it's a few minutes just to share and then we'll pray and we'll see how far god will take us tonight in the name of jesus christ he began to talk about a few things that I feel are very, very important. Um, and, and I love the way that he beautifully presented it. I just want to take it a bit from where he left off so that, you know, we'll be able to have synergy in understanding. And you would notice that he was bringing a very thorough understanding about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, how that intimacy is the foundation and that for me while i sat down and i heard him teach i said this man is truly blessing these people because for most believers we there there are three levels of the operation of the power of god the highest of them is the power of god that is derived from intimacy but that is not the only dimension of God's power. The highest dimension of God's power comes as a product of intimacy. Hallelujah. The second dimension of his power is invested in principles. Now the difference between the first dimension and the second dimension is that the first dimension will require a relationship. It is a byproduct of a relationship. But the power of God that is accessed through principles does not depend on relationships. You do not even have to acknowledge God. All it takes is understanding and the fortitude for compliance. So it is very possible that an individual can reject the person of God and yet access the power that is behind principles. The power was designed to be released the moment there is compliance to the principles the third dimension of god's power is access through covenant alignment that means that the way god administers his possibilities on earth in as much as we are the bible says the same lord is rich unto all but the way he has so designed his program is that he hides his possibilities in men are we are we together he hides his possibilities in men he hides his possibilities in institutions and he hides his possibilities in places you read all through scripture and if you are ever searching for where the anointing is principally you will find it in men you will find it invested in earthly institutions and you will also find it in locations are we together the bible says in genesis 28 that abraham um when isaac came to a place called laws 
and the bible says he lay there to sleep the bible never said he was praying or desiring to see god he just came to a location and the bible says while he slept he found out that it was not just a place that it was a portal that gave him access even to the realm of the spirit that he saw angels ascending and descending hallelujah praise the name of the lord when elijah was about to transit he didn't just transit in any location he kept moving from location to location he got to an exact physical place and he says elisha talk quickly i'm leaving any moment from now jesus himself did not leave to heaven just everywhere there was a particular place he stood on earth and the bible says he began to levitate even in their presence so he hides his anointing in men hallelujah now the way covenant alignment accessing the anointing through covenant alignment works is that there are people purely through the election of grace are we together now purely through the election of grace according to ephesians chapter 3 when you begin to read from verse 3 to 5 paul was teaching and he was given the church in ephesus the basis for his apostolic authority he wanted them to understand that even though he was not part of the disciples when jesus was on earth but that he had obtained grace and he had been called into the fellowship of the mystery let's look at it i want to establish something and then we'll just pray he says how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery an exact mystery not a mystery he made known unto me by revelation the mystery as i i wrote a four in few words verse four it says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ five it says which in other ages was not made known do you know what this means it means there were people who tried sincerely they prayed they fasted they tried to access those truths but it was archived and kept for a certain age so it was not about their inability to press they did their best but it says that these mysteries were closed and were kept for a particular age it says in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit and the purpose for that is found in verse 9 and 10 why did god keep this and now reveal to us verse 9 and 10 says to make all men see it is part of that grace combination that was given there is a grace that can make all men see do you know what that means regardless the limitation of those men educationally intellectually when they come under that grace it can make them see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things in jesus christ let's read verse 10 together ready one to read it says to the intent that means this was hold on everything that paul is saying he says for this purpose this is why he beckoned on us to come into this ministry of apostleship to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multifaceted or manifold wisdom of god so god hides these possibilities in men but according to isaiah 9 and verse 6 every time he sends a word to jacob the intention is that it lightens upon israel are we together he never sent isaiah 9 is it please look for it for me he sent a word to jacob it lightened upon israel now do you know the meaning of that if god wants to speak to everybody he spoke about the voice of god but i need you to understand how the administration comes because when samuel had god he had it in the voice i mean when uh, samuel had god he had it in the voice of eli he did not hear a loud thunder 
when God called Samuel, Samuel ran to Eli and said, did you call me? He went back again and God called him and, and Samuel said, I know what is happening. The next time he speaks, it is through my voice, the semblance of my voice, but I know the one speaking. Tell him, speak, Lord. Because you will hear something that I cannot tell you, even though it is my voice. Are we together now? Yes. This is very powerful. What happens is that God would call a man and through the sacrifice of covenant alignment, God will lead that man through a unique path in the spirit. Listen carefully. A unique path in the spirit that will give that man the capacity to be able to host the dimension of God that he wants to invest in him. Now, when that man successfully goes through that season, God will anoint him and grant him the engracing. And the reward of that man for staying with God is that anyone within that dispensation who wants to access that dimension of God will never do it in dishonor to that vessel. That is your own reward for staying with God. That means God will never bypass you to communicate that dimension across that for as long as you are alive so for instance when you talk today about the ministry of faith choose any man of god on earth that you want to it will still end in copeland you listen to kenneth copeland and he may be very simple and basic but you will be surprised ignore his ministry and downplay him through dishonor you will be surprised that as yielded you are in as in the spirit you will never access certain levels of faith until you recognize that ministry as being a conduit that is the conduit that god set up to administer his dimension of faith when kenneth copeland dies god will raise another man again are we together now this is very powerful The ministry of healing. Choose any man of God you know that works in the healing ministry. You will keep routing it. It will get back to Benihin standing today. You will never truly walk in the healing anointing ignoring the presence of that ministry. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? I'm just teaching you how the three layers of God's anointing that you can have that anointing through encounters through the manifestation of principles and covenant alignment to people who have that anointing based on covenant that is the reason why you can come under the influence of a man who has that covenant with god and even before you understand the dynamics of that grace it will be working in your life did you ever read in the bible that a prophet said god opened the eyes of another person do you know what it takes for your eyes to be open normally if you are to go through the routine and the discipline that will lead to the open eyes it is not just one pronouncement but that under a certain influence there are things that can happen praise the name of the lord he won't believe that this all this is just to explain something that i started We want to see the power of God move in our lives. We want to see endless possibilities flow through us, whether as preachers, business people. And we know that by the strength of the flesh, we are limited. The Bible in many instances has shown the limitations of the strength of man, that we are very, very limited, limited in many ways. Are we together now? For instance, the Bible lets us know when, when you read, when you read all through scripture, it says, has thou not heard, has thou not known the everlasting God, the Lord. Is that true? It says that he does not, he is not weary. There is no fainting with him. Then he now says, even the young men will faint. The old men will be weary now that is a it's not an information about backsliding it is the reality that comes by reason of wearing a mortal body that there is limitation inevitably you will be limited but then it says they that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings as the eagles they will run and not be tired they will walk and not faint 
that is the intimacy that he was talking about that when you spend time with god your spending time with god is predicated upon a revelation that you are incapacitated yourself so it is proof of humility that you are depending upon his wisdom his grace to know that if you run just on the strength of the flesh eventually the devil does not have to attack you the very configuration of your the the body you are wearing is enough to weary you are we together now there are limitations that don't come to men just because they are demon spirits it just happens because of our humanity that our humanity itself is a limitation are we together now let me show you a scripture blessed be the name of the lord romans chapter 8 and verse 26 even if it's just five ten minutes i touch on that then we'll pray romans 8 26 it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities who helps our infirmities the spirit and that he provides help over our infirmities the word infirmities there is not just sickness this is the infirmity he's talking about what is the infirmity we are limited we know not that is the infirmity that the fact that we do not have thorough knowledge we are there are gaps in our understanding he calls it an infirmity that by reason of wearing a mortal body by reason of being of being a man that you are limited unassisted there is so much you cannot do and he says there is a provision according to god's intelligence to remedy that reality is someone learning already that the spirit can help there is something about the human no matter how well intentioned no matter how sincere he calls it an infirmity and it's an infirmity that the hospital cannot treat it's an infirmity that no other earthly institution can help to manage he says only the spirit please keep that scripture there that the spirit help it our infirmity what is the infirmity we know not that's it we are limited we see in part we know in part no matter how educated no matter how we subscribe to all the things the variables he's saying that make for an excelling life are so many it will take assistance we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered so the bible is clear here that the holy spirit has come to help everybody say he's a helper the holy spirit has come to help the believer so that the results you command is not a true reflection of your capacity the result that you command is a reflection of how much you have been assisted are we together now that when you see certain extraordinary results coming from mortal men do not be deceived that it is a reflection of their intelligence or their capacity that behind the scene the helper has come to amplify that which that man is doing this is the reason why the great in the kingdom understand that we are truly men that have been helped by god so when you see uncommon results whether in ministry whether in business it is it is to the degree to which you see godlike qualities flowing through a man it is the degree to which the holy spirit has been involved in his life when a man's life is very natural and basic you can know you don't clap for me for walking but when I begin to fly, now that is not something that is easily given to men. You know that I have been assisted. So I can know to what degree you have been assisted by the Holy Spirit by looking at how much of the godlike quality manifests through you. If I still see your humanity, limitations in process, I, like he was talking about lifting mountains, I think that he started with that kind of statement. Are we together now? 
you cannot be able to lift a mountain humanly speaking but when the spirit of the lord came upon samson the bible says he it will hold it will be like the chains will be like wax before the fire if you understand this dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit you will produce extraordinary results and when people look at you and wonder how come this is happening you will tell them that it is by the spirit it is not a reflection of my ability or my capacity i have only found a way of tapping into the assistance of the spirit for the spirit helpeth our infirmity is someone learning second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5 second corinthians 3 and verse 5 paul was speaking to the church in corinth and he says not that we are sufficient of ourselves are you finding it there now that many times paul the mighty man that we celebrate so much who wrote two thirds of the new testament you would hear him admitting before the people that listen don't be carried away by the excellence and the dexterity of my communication i am limited i am a man here he puts it again not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves but our sufficiency our sufficiency our sufficiency what qualifies us what gives that narrative that we are superhuman is God next verse verse 6 It says, who hath made us to be able ministers, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Listen, let me tell you this. By the privilege of God's grace, I have walked a bit with God and I can tell you, one of the major reasons why people continue to struggle in their christian experience is because they have not come to this state where they admit their inability and insufficiency for most people they come to god as strong wanting him to make them stronger you see the strength of god does not find it does not rest upon strength when the strength of god comes and finds strength it will go back till you exhaust that strength so one of the ways that God compels you to need him is to step back and watch you explore your options until you come to a point where you are aware that your strength is limited. Now you are inviting his help. So the Holy Spirit, he's teaching you. When Apostle Mike came here, he was talking to you about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you this. There is a condition and a posture a man must take to attract the person and the help of the Holy Spirit. Just being available is not enough. There must be an admittance within you that I am insufficient and it is not an insult. It is a, an honest description of your state unassisted. Everywhere in the Bible where men declared their insufficiency, God did not ignore them. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I acknowledge that by myself I am unable to do this. Everywhere God found people declaring that I, I, by myself and by my strength I cannot go far. He would come in and help them. No wonder it is those who do not look like it that truly become it. Because his strength... You cannot appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit until you understand something about the weakness and the limitation of man. That way, the Holy Spirit for you will not just become an instrument you use to get power and do ministry. He does not just become a ladder to climb to get fame. There is something about the state of man that makes your relationship with the Holy Spirit a matter of life and death. Hallelujah. So the Bible says the spirit helpeth our infirmity. Let's read three scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. Ephesians 3 and verse 10. If we can get it in Amplified. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And having taught them the realities of redemption, he got to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 and he said, Finally, brethren, Ephesians 
3. 6 and verse 10, I meant to say. Not 3 and 10. 6 and 10. Finally, brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord. He says, be empowered through your union with him. Be empowered through your union with him. He says, draw your strength from him. That strength which is boundless might provides. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong, not be strong in your intellect. Not be strong. He says, Proverbs chapter 3, when you begin to read from verse 5, he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. He says, the next verse says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse is a warning. He says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Every time you see champions in this kingdom, they were not self-made. The first law of intimacy with the Holy Spirit is not asking him to come. The first law of intimacy with the Holy Spirit is not even prayer. It is not fasting. The first law is an acknowledgement. You have to study the nature of man and the imperfections, the plethora of limitations that reside within this species called man. Then it will make you need God. And the only way God can make that happen is to be patient with you. He will not rush his presence to your life. You will not appreciate the value of his presence. So he will usually, because man as a species is proud, he will allow you to exhaust your connections, exhaust your wisdom, exhaust your intellect. That is why you will see things that should be, but it's not. Because there is a dimension of results that is controlled from the realm of the spirit. In fact, it is the foundation of all results. Through faith we understand. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. That the walls were framed by the word of God. Is that true? That that which now appears came from a realm that was unseen. Many people are unable to experience the power and the grace of God. Because we are still sufficient in ourselves. There are many sufficient preachers in themselves. Sufficient businessmen in themselves. Sufficient musicians. So you will have physically speaking all the things that by the physical uh, requirement should produce for results. Yet you will marvel and wonder. I have told you that there are times you can have a boat. There are times you can be at sea. That's where fish should be. There are times your net can be walking and yet you will not catch fish. It is not lack of skill. It is not lack of diligence. There are times all the variables are correct. And yet you will not catch fish. At that point you don't need fishing again. You need Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.